Ladies and gentlemen, happy Doctor Who Day! We are recording this on the 23rd of November, which means it is exactly 57 years to the day that Doctor Who first aired. Hooray! 57 years of an old guy in a junkyard being an asshole! Woo! Uh, hold, hold, uh, you say a junkyard, I think you mean a quarry. No, no, I'm talking about the first episode ever. I mean a junkyard. It's, it's a I am Foreman. It's a junkyard. Yeah, it's 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 a William Hartnell joke. <laughs> but yeah, hey, Doctor Who Day. Also, a very I happy birthday to um, Doctor a very happy birthday to uh, Clara Oswald. Doctor Who Mirror Alert. And a very happy birthday in the real world to Michelle Gomez. <laughs> Yeah, they they picked the perfect person to play. Yeah, they picked the perfect person. Who let a, who let a, who let a goddamn um, Zarbi loose in here? I, we 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 changed the mirror alert in the web planet. Remember, we changed it to a Zarbi noise. I'm so I know. That's why I'm referring to it. <laughs> Jerry, I know you have got the memory of a seer, but try to just remember a few facts about what we do from week to week, please. Wait, who are you again? <laughs> what is oh, amnesia? Right, right. You keep the trope alive, I remember. What is amnesia? Is it A, memory loss, A, memory loss, or for the Battle of Hastings? <laughs> well, I think before we get too far, you have some people to introduce. Yeah, I was, I was getting to that, and then we, we went off on a tangent. So what else is new? <laughs> uh, to my virtual left... Who can take a sunrise, sprinkle it with dew, and bore me richer with constant references to mirrors? It's Freezing Inferno. Hello. Yes. <laughs> and to my virtual <laughs> right. I was expecting that hello. <laughs> it caught me off guard, what can I say? Uh... Hello. Hello. And to my virtual right. Is she a sweet dream or a beautiful nightmare? You decide. It's Concave Usurper, also known as Cat. Candies, cookies, ice cream, all free today. I'll someone will get that. Someone uh, will get that. Yeah, well, I I'm, I, I'm not someone, clearly. What the hell? Uh, Obviously, you, you guys have never seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, so... No, I have seen it. I just don't remember that particular bit. And now I've got the, the amnesia. I, and now, I, and now I, I'm mirroring Jerry. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, actually, it's wild because uh, we're, we're almost five years since that infamous blunder because it was when Hell Bent. Yeah. Aired. Yeah, we are almost there. <laughs> oh, figure out the anniversary yeah. for that Speaking of the anniversary, yeah, well, there's, there's some really cool stuff has been revealed for um, for today. You, you get the impression they, they were they were hanging on to all the cool stuff for, to announce it, specifically on Doctor Who Day, but um, an animation of the missing part of the web planet. Web, uh, sorry, not the web planet, web, web web fear, web the web of fear. fear. The web, web of fear. fear. Because yeah. we're talking Which, about the web uh, planet. I messed it up. Yeah. I know, I know. yeah. Um, yeah I know. A really cool um, title sequence for 57 years of Doctor Who featuring all of the people who played the Doctor. Mm -hmm. All 15 of them, courtesy of Emily Cook and Borna Matasic. Really, really cool. And uh, Big Finish have announced a huge thing. The end of the beginning. Four Doctors, mm -hmm. one audio drama, final destination. I think it's Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, Peter Davison and Paul McGann all in the same audio venture. That's nice. And it's the end of the main monthly range of Big Finish. Which, bold decision, but I mean, yeah. they've been doing it for 20 years, and I think they've been gravitating towards the uh, box sets anyway. But uh, it's interesting about the Web Fear animation, because apparently, like, back in 2013, when they found all those, they had it, and then they lost it again. I guess this is just them shrugging, going, we don't know what the hell it is. The, the Web Fear features nice. the Brigadier, doesn't it? Because I think that was done yeah. on the... I think that was done yeah, on the on the watch along, uh, the big the big uh, Who marathon on Twitch. Interesting. Yeah, and people didn't uh, know people who didn't know that there was an episode missing <laughs> started to watch that serial. Wait, 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 
the Twitch marathon aired Web of Fear and just jumped from two to four? No, 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 no. They showed a reconstruction for part oh, three. they actually showed a recon. It was the only the episode of any, any serial they showed that had a recon. And everyone who hadn't seen and it cowards. before was very confused. Oh, no. They're just like, uh, hello. Uh, Wait, why is the Twitch picture not moving? <laughs> I mean, animating Web of Fear episode three is nice. Now do it to Underwater Menace 1 and 4, and we're golden. Yeah. <laughs> I do, mean, uh... Do it to uh, all the missing... Do it to all the missing episodes. Let's let's get a... Let's get a, a final... You know, compendium of all the all the Doctor Who's. So, was there anything else that happened today? Or should we talk about, uh... The wonderful episode we've chosen for Doctor Who's 57th anniversary. Yeah, I chose this <laughs> one, and I made a huge mistake. Did I didn't you, realize... Did you really? It, it, yeah. It's, it's okay, Raniac. We're used to you making huge mistakes. I know. Your oh, my God. <laughs> I know. No, she's right. She's right. Uh, I give you two of the Cybermen as, as uh, Exhibit A, but... um. It's okay. it's okay. We still tolerate you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but you actually, and I'll point this out to the viewers, you actually picked something fitting for a different reason, because as we'll get into, uh, November 28th is the 30th anniversary of a British politician, Margaret Thatcher, resigning from office. Yeah. Now, I wonder how that could be relevant to the Doctor Who we're about to Gee, I, I have about. no idea. How could it be? Uh, I will just say, <laughs> I will just say right now, um, because I think, I think it's because of the Candyman, right? Yeah, candy it's, man. that's exactly it. Um, because Margaret yeah. Thatcher is a very, shall we say, polarizing political figure. Some people really admired her. Some people absolutely despised her. Um, I, I'm not going to go too much into into that because I don't want to uh, to upset someone either, either side of it. So we're just going to jump straight into the Happiness Patrol. The second story of season 25, McCoy's second series. And uh, I, I have to tell a little story. I've told this on the podcast before, but no, nowhere does it become more apparent than here. So in 2010, high off of series five, a friend recommended that I watch some classic Doctor. So I started with Remembrance of the Daleks. Good and choice. I watched it, and it was great. I was like, wow, that kicks ass. I want to see more. But I want to see where this ace character came from. So I went back and watched Dragonfire. And I was like, oh, I now I know where this ace character came from. But I don't know any of this other shit. But that's weird. I don't know who the screaming lady is. But let's jump ahead. So the next episode, the next story is The Happiness Patrol. The Happiness Patrol is not a story you should watch as your third ever foray into classic Doctor. Oh, you yeah. sweet summer child. Frankly, it, I was not prepared for that level of gonzo. It punches you in the face with its, shall we say, campness. Well, you were lucky. At least you got actual exciting episodes. I watched the Aztecs as my first classic Doctor Who. That's a... Uh, yeah. uh, well, you could do worse. So bored. You could do a I lot mean, worse. The, yeah, the Aztecs is a... Uh, I don't vibe with it for my own personal reasons. But, yeah, it is a little theatrical and eh. But, anyway, Happiness Patrol. Uh, I At the time, I was like, oh, that is, that is way too fucking weird for me. Come a decade later, when I ironically stand weird shit like the web planet, and now we've come back. It's still too weird. No, oh, actually. Well, it's weird, but... I uh, gravitate more towards the fun political readings of it because this is like, <laughs> this is the weirdest shit. I'll, I'll make an analogy here. Happiness Patrol is like a candy. Oh, a big pink gonzo shell of candy with an anarcho-leftist caramel center inside. Note to self, never pick the Aztecs. <laughs> so let's discuss uh, let's let's jump right into the story shall yeah. we? Yeah, why, why don't we? 
Why don't we just follow the yellow brick oh, road and, and see where it really goes down to? Time, but let's do it anyways. Spoilers, it goes down to my depression, but... Oh my god. <laughs> not really, not really, I'm joking. Because it fits so the episode, because you're depression. not allowed to be depressed on, on pain of death, see? I'm being topical, oh. haha. Yeah, yeah. I, I, wish I, had a, I wish I had a whistle, I totally played that I was calling the patrol. <laughs> uh, break out the harmonica. I don't have one of those either. So we open with this this woman. She looks down the dumps. She's wearing dark clothing. She is. Um, she meets this man playing. No, sorry. She's list. She she's uh, she's playing the blues, is she? No. I don't know if she was playing the blues. But... She was just sitting down and being sad and depressed. Well, Tardis Wiki is completely full of it then because it says she's playing melancholy blues. So. I'm just going to throw this in the bin and start again. Uh, <laughs> she sits down on a bench. She sits down on a bench and uh, is approached it's not by a... even that. They, they also put in a typo. A woman wanders down and hulk dark hallway playing melancholy blues. And dark hallway. Right, so trash website aside, a woman meets this guy on a bench. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a hat. Uh, he basically says, um, are you feeling sad and lonely? I, I could, there's a place you can discuss it out with Lee. But it's all a trap because this guy is Silas P. The P stands for prick. <laughs> yeah, but th this is a bust, basically. A bust for depressed people. He oh, is basically... Bad public. I hate to make this analogy, but he is basically this world's Gestapo. Yeah, I mean... You've got a story with, like, routine disappearances and, how shall I put this, uh, shall we say, undesirable people to the regime being killed? Yeah. Of course, they're undesirable because they're gloomy and depressed, but, I mean, there are some readings you can take in this episode that make you go, oh, this is this is fashy as fuck. Yes, they can. Let's, let's put it this way. I'm 95% sure that the video game We Happy Few were, was based on this episode. I was going to bring that up, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've, I've never actually played that. I think it's on the Xbox. The, the inspiration is, is absolutely blatant it's because... everything. Instead of Killjoys, it's Downers. They they all paint their faces like the characters in, in the stories. Mm -hmm. It is obviously... Where it got its inspiration from, whether it meant to or not. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this lady gets busted, and out come the titular Happiness Patrol. And may I just say, cue the music. Jam, jam is excitement. Ooh, jam, <laughs> jam is adventure. <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> glamour and glitter, fashion and fame. I, I, I. What, what do you want? I know that song. It's a bop. Come on. <laughs> Don't say released to come to terms with the release of Cherry. <laughs> okay. Okay, but I need, to, I need to point out something that I just remembered. There is a fan comic by some guy. I, I forget his name. But it's called Outrage of the Zygons. And it is, and I'm not kidding, a Six Doctor Mel crossover with Jim. <laughs> I am not a fucking... It's a, com a whole illustrated comic this guy did. I'm not kidding. Oh, Jesus. Wow, we're, we're reviewing the wrong thing. Just just get that on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hasbro has decided to cross over ponies with Transformers, so why not? Hmm. Hasbro also owns the Power Rangers license, so those those could potentially cross over as well in oh, the they future. they already crossed over with uh, Batman, so... Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm um, not kidding. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just waiting to see the um, the look of confusion on Power Rangers fans' faces when when Twilight Sparkles shows up in Power Rangers. Okay, okay, <laughs> but okay, but follow, follow me here. Follow, follow the uh, Kevin Bacon chain here. Transformers crossed over with the ponies. Yeah. Transformers crossed over with Star Trek, and Star Trek crossed over with Doctor Who. You can build a bridge here. Is it made of pain? Six degrees. Was it six degrees of Kevin Bacon or is it seven? Six. Six, six. degrees of Kevin Bacon. Anyway, uh, these are the Happiness Patrol. They look like that because it's 1988. 
Or as I called them, the Poodle Patrol. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fitting. That's fitting. I, I, I just call them Jem because the hair. Yeah. yeah. It, is, anyway, it is very 80s hair. Anyway, uh, then the Doctor and Ace arrive, which, hey, this is a good pairing, obviously. And for some reason, we get reference to Invasion of the Dinosaurs, a Pertwee episode where dinosaurs invade London. We do? What? Really? No. Yeah. In an episode called Invasion of the Dinosaurs, I never would have believed what it. Was the, what was the and reference? Is... No, he was talking about how the Brigadier met a T-Rex and pterodactyls and shit. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Invasion of the Dinosaurs is uh, special. I'll, I'll have to show you the uh, special effects. I, I didn't catch it was a reference to a specific episode. I just thought they were just like making a, a funny mention of the of the Brigadier and like an, an off-screen adventure. But no, it, it really happened, didn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah they, were, they really yeah. did deal with dinosaurs in London. Look, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of every single classic Doctor Who serial. Sue me. <laughs> well, we're working our way through that. Anyway, <laughs> we're here on a Earth colony in the future called Terra Alpha, which the Doctor's heard bad rumors about. Ace doesn't like it. And almost immediately, they run into Trevor Sigma of the Galactic Census Bureau, who's, surprise, surprise taking a galactic census of all the colonists. Yeah, this is like um, Doctor Who's take on a on a civil servant? Yeah. Like a, like a stuffed right, shirt? Yeah. It... He's a very stuffy, bureaucratic, by the yeah. worst type. You know, the Doctor doesn't really tear him down. He's just sort of like not deadpan dealing with him. He's not the worst thing about this this story, Trevor Sigma. No. There's, no. there's a there's it's a fun bit there's, so there's a fun little bit in part two that I quite liked involving him. Oh yeah, I know what bit you're talking about. But can we talk about the Happiness Patrol Death Dune buggy? Which yeah, <laughs> it's like it looks like a car out of the Super Mario Bros. movie, and on the like and on the like grill on the hu- on the uh, bumper, they had the Greek comedy tragedy masks. Put it it's this like, way, they oh, wouldn't be out of place in Twisted Metal. Exactly. Oh, someone make a mod for Twisted Metal for that. And then they uh, decide to paint the TARDIS bright pink. Painting the TARDIS pink. We're painting the TARDIS pink. <laughs> <laughs> because blue is a downer. And this leads to a lovely scene where the Doctor and Ace, they want, they want to figure out what's going on. They want to stir up trouble. They want to get arrested, so... When they encounter the Happiness Patrol, they get into the shit a little bit, but they don't get arrested. So they're just like, "You're not going to arrest us? No, uh, uh, we don't have badges. Uh, we don't have passes. Uh, hey, we're criminals. Yeah. I guess you better arrest us." And Ace nearly ruins it by saying, "I've got lots of badges." <laughs> He's like, "Quiet, Ace." <laughs> uh, they're so good. They're just like, "Hey." We're enemies of the state. We're here to cause a rocket. <laughs> well, you put it like that. But yeah, the, the badges are quite important in, in the world of Terror Alpha. Uh, we should mention there's a scene uh, earlier where uh, Silas, Silas P, Silas Breck, he gets his 47th Killjoy extermination badge. It's 45th. He tries to correct that. This is when we first meet the main villain of the episode, the head of state, Helen A. Yeah, moving on. Who, <laughs> well, no, it's, it's interesting the way that they're catty because he's like, ah, oh, there you go, Silas P., your 45th Killjoy badge. 47, actually. I do have to Silas P. And, and when he says he's aiming for the top, she just says, not the very top, I hope. Yeah. She likes his so ambition, but not too much. Yeah. So there's a little friction there between her laying down the law and being in not charge and all like that. Not like that. All of you who are thinking that, get your dirty minds out of here. Not yeah. like that. Oh, God, no. 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 <laughs> Just no. Anyway, uh, you clearly know that Helen A is in on because she's casually watching the lady from before uh, get shot in a routine disappearance videotape. 
Yep. Yep. That's the thing that happened. Mm -hmm. so, a, a lot of things happen uh, in this in this story. Yeah. Oh, and but we also that... meet her. Uh, we meet her husband, Joseph C. Uh, yeah. So, oh, I gotta ask, which is a which is a more uh, on the nose Margaret Thatcher parody, Helen A. and Joseph C. or Danos and Thatchos from that one Lenny Henry? Oh, sketch? for God's! <laughs> I know I had to mention it. I think the Thatcher robot was, was sort of more tongue in cheek. I've <laughs> never seen Letter Kenny, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Lenny Henry. Lenny, Henry. Lenny, Kenny. Lenny whatever. <laughs> I heard Letter I heard Letter Kenny. I, I whatever I just said. You have seen him cack to his spiteful. Yeah. No, 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 I don't no, know no. What she you're talking about. She's no, she thought I meant a, a Canadian show. I said Lenny Henry. I, I don't know who Lenny Henry He was in Spyfall. He was the full guy I don't in Spyfall. know actors. The only actors I know are... He's a, he's a black comic in the 80s. He did a, a Doctor Who parody. I'll, I'll link you the skit after. Kevin. And, a, and a, cyber, okay. a cyber man with... Like, um, don't, ye don't yell at me for not seeing things that you guys have seen. That's Do not do yelling. that. I'm not yelling. I'm no, not yelling. I'm not I'm yelling. Not I'm just pointing out... I'm not I'll pointing out. You. I'm just pointing out that you have seen him <laughs> in something. I'm gonna fight you somehow. What? I don't know how. What, what were we talking about? <laughs> <help? laughs> so let's get back to Helen A and Joseph C before somebody punches someone in the face. Well, yeah. that, would, that would be difficult for a computer screen. She'll find a way. I'm sure. What's that? I What's still that? have your address. I can punch you emotionally. What's that? <laughs> Sephiroth, so she's not wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so moving away from the from the obvious Thatcher parody, because please can we move away from the obvious Thatcher just for a little bit of time. Um, for a little bit, but the, the doctor has been arrested at this point. Uh, well, they're not so much arrested as they are just waiting. Yeah, they're in the waiting then, zone. Yeah, this is this is this is funny, but yeah, it happens a little later. But we'll bring it up when they're like they're they make reference to being prisoners, and the one happiness patrol lady garden says, "This isn't a prison; it's a waiting zone. You're here to wait." And it's just and it's just like, oh, I see. There's no prisons on Terra Alpha. This is just a waiting zone, which just so happens to operate exactly like being in a prison. Yeah. Anyway, they, they meet so, Harold V. Yeah. At this time, who her, um, apparently used to be um, Helen A.'s writer. Her joke writer. Yeah. Oh my god, the joke! He's like playing on the slot machine thing, and he wins. And then the hollow screen comes up, and it's Helen A. And she tells a, a fucking poly level pun. I'm sorry, Father, I love you. I was going to say that's that's insulting sort of the poly. <laughs> I, but it's like in this story it's just so morbid it's just like did you hear that the kill joy you auditioned for the happiness patrol he was i, I, I don't even remember the he was tickled to, like, death. tickled to death tickled to death yeah oh the shock Ish. pun happens later yeah i remember yeah, yeah it's like it's it's a dumb pun but it's also saying hey did you hear about that guy i killed him <laughs> Yeah. I can see why he was fired. Yeah. And then if you rearrange fired, you get fried because a bit later he gets fucking electrocuted. Yeah, and, and then the goddamn and guard the gets you on the pun on the pun action. Quite electrifying. Ooh, how shocking. That man was fucking killed. <laughs> and Ace just wants to tear her fucking throat out. Yes. She's like, you son of a bitch. And the doctor has to calm her down. He's like, no, no, no. I, I know, I know, but I need you to be calm. I, I can't, we can't tear shit down. I, I do, I do like angry. the dynamic between Ace and the Doctor here in this story. Yep. I don't I, like a whole see, much I else about say, the Happiness Patrol, but that's pretty good. I will say oh, okay. super sad because isn't Ace all about anarchy and chaos and everything? Yeah. And taking down the man. Yeah. It, I don't know. I just wish she had a little bit more to do in this episode because it literally is about taking down the man. Well, <laughs> she, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, it would it would be nice. There are some scenes definitely later on that would be nice for Ace to be a part of. I just I just love the fact blow up I just love the way Cats are taking down the man there. I, I enjoyed that immensely. Right. <laughs> Speaking of the man, I think we need to talk about the sweet little friend who's introduced right about now, according to my notes. Yeah. So yeah. um. Just a, a bit before Harold V dies, we do get to uh, experience the wonders. <clears throat> oh, let let the pure Gonzo wash over you. Uh, a a killjoy, a killjoy is led into a into a into a room. He's been sentenced to death for, for being sad. Or, uh, uh, what, what's his crime? He's showing emotion in public, yeah, a public display yeah. of grief. He, he was uh, grieving publicly. So, yeah. killing him for being sad. Yeah. yeah. This, this, yeah. And before this, Harold V said that there were three ways for people to disappear. Um, Happiness, I don't remember what they all were. Uh, Happiness, patrol edition. Routine disappearance. Um, and the third, do you know who the Candyman is, Doctor? And then we meet this guy. Harold, uh, Harold also mentions that uh, Helen really likes the firing squad. Yeah. So we all think, oh, this is what's going to happen. Because uh, the Happiness Patrol raises their guns at him. And then the Happiness Patrol gets dismissed. What's going on here? Interesting. And then we then we cut to uh, the Candy Kitchen. And we meet... Who can take the sunrise, sprinkle it with dew... And drown a motherfucker in Pepto Bismol to the Candy Man. Yeah, we and meet a. Candy spelled with a K. We meet a walking cease and desist from Bassett's. <laughs> He's literally not kidding. No, there, there really was a cease and desist from Bassett's. They, yeah, uh, Bassett's is a licorice all sort. Yeah, they're a sweet oh, manufacturer, yeah. and they they got wind of the fact that uh, a character in Doctor Who was going to use the uh, the likeness of their mascot character, Bertie Bassett. Raniac, Raniac, giving you a headache in editing. Put the Candyman and Bertie Bassett man up on screen. I will. Same time. I, I was planning to anyway. See, I mean, Bertie Bassett was right. <laughs> yeah, the Bassett Bassett's were absolutely uh, justified in what they did, but what they. It, the rumours were for years that they, there was actually going to be a lawsuit. And it wasn't that. They objected to the character, uh, but they allowed the character to appear on screen because they were assured he wasn't coming back. This was a one-off. <laughs> um, and yeah, it kind of is a one-off, but also not, which we'll get to later. But anyway, they objected what? to, to blatant think, copyright at theft. At the very least, we can safely say that this is a whopper of a character. Ah, ah. <laughs> He's oh, a real a jolly now. rancher, that Candyman. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay, so this is just look, we we have flirted with Gonzo on this show. I don't think we're gonna hit the peaks of the web planet, but <laughs> you have whoop 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 zabi at, at the top like a ten, then. Then we have in Happiness Patrol, murderous executioner robot with a candy-coated shell. That's and like an eight. I'm going to say something that might <laughs> make me unpopular. Uh -oh. If he didn't look like a walking Bertie Bassett parody, this wouldn't be too bad a villain. I mean... That just adds I to the charm for me. I just agree. I think the concept is solid. It's just the way he looks. But I, the I disagree. Is, the I disagree. Dissonance is wild. Yeah. That's what I think. Like, murderous executioner looking like the Bassett's man. That's <laughs> a <laughs> goddamn candy robot. Like, I like his voice, too. I like his swirly fucking eyes that keep spinning. Yeah. Let, let me just say this. Let me say this. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that he looks like how he does, this would be the worst villain I've ever seen so far. Okay, that's a fair. That's a fair opinion. That's, that, yeah, that's. I I can understand where you're coming from. I just find it funny at this point. Cat. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
the Candyman himself is hilarious. If he wasn't the Candyman, then he would be an awful, awful villain. Yeah. After six years anyway, doing yeah. this, cat, you should know by now that you're more than entitled to your wrong opinion. Anyway, I didn't this guy... hear any of that. You like completely yeah. broke up as you were saying that. All right. Anyway, he pulls some levers, and we hear some grim, like synth carnival music or something and as we see this red shit flowing through the pipes and the guy up front who's like what am i I, was i supposed to get shot a big ass tube comes down over his head and the next thing we see is he's fucking drowned in this red shit death by chocolate surprise surprise. literally death by chocolate I mean, yeah, it's well, not well, chocolate. Fondant is not chocolate. Yes, but there, there isn't a, there isn't a dessert called Death by Fondant. What, 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 what? Guy died from candy. I'm wasted on this show sometimes. Mm. I wouldn't even say that fondant's really a candy, but that's just me. Well. No, it's 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 uh, a confectionery. Yeah. Um. No, it's it's an icing. Death by sugar. And, and yeah. the reason why Harold V is killed is because he's the killed, the executed killjoy's brother. Yeah. So they're like, oh, we got his brother. Oh, uh, what about this guy? Zap. Yep. Shocking, <laughs> shocking experience. Which is funny that Ace and the, doc- Ace and the Doctor are getting mad at these puns because I don't, I don't think Kat's seen it, but Vengeance on Varos... Colin Baker story has something similar with the acid bath scene where two guys fall in an acid bath and Colin Baker just takes his coat and is like, forgive me if I didn't join you. Yeah, but funnily enough, I don't mind that as much. Yeah, okay. That's that's fair. And I don't mind Ventures on Viruses, but despite the fact that's very political as well, it's the way it's it's the way it's all handled. (laughs) I wouldn't call Ventures on Virus a subtle serial of Doctor Who. But it's a hell of a lot more subtle than this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong in that. I can't deny. But, but anyway, uh, back to the plot a bit. Uh, the doctor and Ace notice a go kart at the waiting zone. Yes. So they ask, "What? What will happen if we take? What would happen if, just hypothetically saying, we were to take that go kart and drive away? Oh, well, I wouldn't do a thing. It's booby traps. Let's fuck with it." Yeah, yeah, and they actually get it working. The happiness patrol are up to their old Twix. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Y'all are fucked. <laughs> oh Jesus. So How many fucked. chocolate pods did we get into this episode? Uh, oh, I got a million. Anyway, in another cutaway here, we meet Helena's pet Fifi. Alien puppy! Fifi! This is a sticker rax. Sticker rax. Not related to a Rex. Yeah, not not really in the slightest, but um, this thing, this thing, it's a puppet. This 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 Fifi thing. Mm-hmm. I suppose it looks all right for the for the setting. It's not the most Gonzo thing in the story. Oh my God! No. I mean, we got the Kenny man running that, around. Right? We got the Kenny man running around, so it can't be the most gonzo thing in the story by default. You want, you want to know a fun fact about Fifi? Go on. on. You two, you two have seen Fifi before, have we? In dimensions in time. Yeah. Oh lord. Yes, we have. Because <laughs> they did a Power Rangers thing with just like all old, old monsters lying around. Okay, whatever goddamn rubber suits we've got in storage, bring them out. So that's why you get like a. King R. Golan in EastEnders. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> that can't under the stretch. How are you doing today? Uh... Anyway, uh, Dr. Anyway. and Ace defuse a bomb on the go-kart. They drive off. They get shot at a bit. Yeah, she's a rotten shot, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Well, she misses at point-blank range. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get Super Ace Kart. Yeah, but unfortunately, it doesn't last very long because while the Doctor gets away, Ace is recaptured pretty much immediately. Well, 
But actually what she does is she tries to create a diversion for the doctor yeah. by letting them catch her. So I suppose it's not like it's not like as incompetent as oh she got captured again. Oops. Well, and, once again, uh, this this TARDIS fandom thing is full of crap. Mhm. Mm <laughs> well, it's okay. We all know that Ace is one of the best classic doctor companions bar none. I call her the best. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see my face right now, but you know it's exactly the face I'm making right now. <laughs> it's if okay, I... we only have to worry if Rainiac decides to put a bounty on me. Oh my! God. <laughs> if I had to sum up my my facial expression in one word to the viewers right now, it would be pained. I. Listen, listen, I I know I know what Raniac's thinking right now, Cat. You know what you you know what Raniac what? is thinking. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Kinder no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have so many of these. You don't even know. I've been th thinking of these the whole time. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> I can't so, even continue. I'm laughing so hard. Uh, uh, <laughs> we anyway, we we meet. Um, if we could just turn back to the uh, to the Doctor Who story for a moment, mm -hmm. we meet two of the more interesting characters now. The Ace meets one. I just called it the Ace. What the hell? Ace meets one, <laughs> and the Doctor meets the other. So the Doctor oh, escapes yeah, so the, from the Happiness so the Patrol. And he runs oh, into yeah. Silas Prick. Yay. Oh, th th does this... Uh, okay, this happens. Yeah, okay, this happens. Yeah, well, all right. This, yep, he runs into Silas P. Silas P tries to pull the same bullshit. Hey, we can be... There's a secret place where you can be depressed if you want to and throw down the regime. And just as he's about to blow the whistle and call the Happiness Patrol, who should judo chop him in the neck but... Earl Sigma. Yeah, we've seen this guy before. Yeah. He was a he was a blues player. The Habits Patrol put a sticker on his jacket. Oh, I love that. He's he, he's just playing the blues, and the Happiness Patrol come by, and he ups the pitch. He's just like doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, just a happy tune, and yeah. I slap a happy sticker on. Him. Just like, yeah. Okay, this guy's happy. We don't need to shoot him in the head. I guess. Uh. But yeah, he judo chops Silas P and gets the doctor out of there. And the Happiness Patrol immediately come in and just like, you fucked up, Silas P. Bang, bang, bang. Good. They, they, got, a few, uh, they got a few Snickers out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But before we cut back to where they go, we should talk about Ace and uh, what's the name? What's the name of this girl? Susan Q. Susan Q. Now, Susan Q is quite interesting. Yes, yeah, she's a happiness patrol girl who's actually sad. She is so secretly, she... manically, maybe even suicidally depressed. But she's a member like of the happiness the patrol. Of... I kind of like the scene because of Ace. When, when you cut to the scene, Ace is playing the fucking spoons. Yeah. Not well. Yeah. That was Not very well. funny. And then, and then there's the scene where Susan Q asks her, do you know any songs? And Ace is like, oh, there's this great song with this girl who throws her wedding, the guy who throws his wedding in the rain, the girl gets it, and she gets hit by a train, and she dies. It's a good song. And she's like, really? Really? Happy songs. <laughs> so... <laughs> but yeah, I, I do like this bit where um, they are they are talking to each other, and she, she's much nicer than the other patrol members, it, it has to be said. Yeah. Ironic, considering. Yeah, and then and then she she says that you know she's she's tired of, of being happy all the time. She's tired of smiling. She knows that if she's discovered, she'll disappear, and that's that's just fine. Um, but she says, you know, what's your talent to Ace? And Ace can't think of it. Well, how about magic? How about a disappearing act? He says, what do you mean? He says, well, how about I close my eyes and you take this key. When I open my eyes again, you've gone. Cute. And it happens. Which leads us back to the Doctor and Earl sneaking into the candy kitchen and encountering Candy Boy himself. Yeah. So one cliffhanger. And uh, also Gilbert M. 
who works with the candy man. Gilbert Dam. Oh, I'm going to have to say about Gilbert Dam in a second, but like, we should mention that the story has like, it's, it's very camp. I'd say, I mean, everything's like in pinks. As a row of tents. Got on. What? It's as camp as a row of tents. <laughs> yeah. Which I think adds to the political subtext super text almost to the story but we'll get into that later and we go into episode two which opens on a protest for being sad yep well it's not a protest for being sad it's about factory conditions yeah factory conditions and being sad yeah yes but being sad about the factory conditions but if you want to talk about gonzo Oh, Why don't we talk about how the Doctor gets out of being cornered by the candy man? Well, 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 before... Oh, I love this scene. But before that, before that, I really want to mention the, uh, the, the candy man's description of how he kills people exactly. Uh-oh. Which is the weirdest shit. Like, he makes candy that is so sweet and good that the human mind can't comprehend how tasty it is and you die. Which would let's be released in the Terry Pratchett book, believe it or not. Terry Pratchett. Of all the things to put in this, you put in, like, cosmic horror? It's, it's like Lovecraftian nightmare fuel, a thing that cannot be, except a sweet that cannot be this sweet? What? Yeah. yeah. That is just so weird. Like, and that's 10 compared to God. the rest of it, honestly. That's just so, fondant. Fondant, it, nobody really likes fondant, so that just sounds like fondant to he me. He makes so. fondant so fucking sweet, you're like, ah, and you die. That, that's just fondant now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we, we, we need to talk about how the doctor escapes, because it's the funniest fucking thing. Yeah. And it's been embedded in my mind for the past so ten so years. whoever built the candy man right Gilbert Dan Gilbert well, Dan built the candy man for the record well yeah I suppose it is Gilbert Gilbert M when he built the candy man he he gave him one fatal weakness being made of fucking candy no 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 not, not that weakness he's got a, he's got a temper yeah. And when he's got a temper, he does things that are maybe not conducive to his overall uh, well-being. Case in point, he swings his hand around because he's annoyed, and he knocks a bottle of lemonade off the table, and the lemonade sticks him to the floor. So the doctor and Earl are escaping as the lemonade's melt in his sticky candy feet, which, I mean, I'd say that's another weakness, making a robot out of fucking candy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> agreed. Just saying, you know, then. But then again, but the doctor and Earl are skating, and what's bur- burned in my mind is the candy man in his shrill, like, Gilbert! Voice. <laughs> Gilbert! Gilbert! <laughs> That's so, that was so That's funny. So funny. <laughs> and now you know why I kind of don't hate the candy man. <laughs> oh, I love that so and also, Gilbert! I'm going to explain for some people at home who might not know this. Um, when they say lemonade, they don't mean the water, sugar, and lemon mixture that us Americans are used to. They mean oh. things like Sprite. Oh, yeah. Okay. I wasn't, lemonade. I wasn't aware that U.S. lemonade and U.K. lemonade were different, but yes. I, I, yeah, I, did, I didn't different. actually know that. I was thinking water, sugar, lemonade, but yeah, that makes sense. This is so British lemonade. I, I believe in England our lemonade is called flat lemonade, but don't quote me on that. Oh, oh. Cute. Wow. No, that's not cute. That's just shade. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because it's in them bubbles in it. Flat lemonade. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Um, like, the, the Doctor makes a really bad pun that's really forced. Bad puns and this Yeah. Podcast? But the execution is so forced. The, 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 the execution of Sweet Dreams is so forced. <laughs> God. But thankfully, you can ignore it because they're kind of just shouting Gilbert all the time, and, and that's much funnier. <laughs> Kill Roy! Kill Roy! I... Kill Roy! 
No, that was Warrior's Gate. <laughs> Honestly, Gilbert is my favorite character in this. Just, he's just so done with everything. <laughs> he is so uh, done. Like, if you're gonna take the camp metaphor, like the Candyman and Gilbert, I ship them. How in the world was he? <laughs> They're like an old married couple. An old married gay couple. How in the world was Gilbert not flat as a killjoy? <laughs> I don't uh... know. Because he made the candy man. Oh, who the fuck he he the never candy smiles. Man? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But honestly, I want to give him a hundred grand. So, I, I've got I've got a ship name for you. Gilbert's deadpan and Candyman's marzipan. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it have, gets I worse. A ship name for you? No. <laughs> What, what, what was that? Again? No. I have, a, I have a ship name for you. No. <laughs> just just no. So, so uh, setting up Chekhov's gun here a bit, the Doctor and her escape into Candyman's uh, pipeline. And Earl's about to play his harmonica when the Doctor points out, hey, don't do that, because it comes to crystallized sugar. If you do a harmonic resonance, you'll cave it in on us. Yeah. Mm. That could be shot up for later. And then back in the yeah. candy kitchen, we get one of the weirdest lines of this entire thing, where the candy man's begging for Gilbert to free him. Gilbert's not going to free him. And he says, I need me and you need me. What? <laughs> you need... And the candy man's just like, you need... I need... <laughs> was that a flop? Was, was, just... was that meant to be, I need me... I need you and you, and you need I, me? I have no idea. <laughs> Jeez. Gilbert flubbed it, but anyway, the Candyman's ready to strangle the, the shit out of him. And yeah. like, and, oh yeah, sure. And that saves him, because Choke without baby, Gilbert, he's stuck on the free. floor forever, so... Mm-hmm. Gilbert does not actually free him at this point. <laughs> no. <laughs> it it, it could be that he doesn't know how to, it could be that he knows exactly how to, just doesn't want to bother. I prefer the latter. Jesus, Gilbert yeah. doesn't give a fuck. Well, you know, he he will eventually free him. It's just it has to be after eight. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, this uh, is all going on. Well, this is all going on. Susan Q's. Um, da, 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 da. I, think, I, I think I missed that one. <laughs> after eight. Oh, you beat me to it. I was going to say that in ten minutes. Thanks for that. I was going to say, looking at the clock, I see it's after eight, but you've, you've beat it, me to it, so... It's, it's okay, it's okay, Fred. He He's a bit of a flake. We'll just... Oh, my God. Wait, who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Mr. B, come on, let's go ahead and continue on. <laughs> it just uh, never stops. Uh, this store is a real wonder bar. Man, Godiva got a good one for you. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, that I one have, was a okay, bit of a stretch, um, and I'm sorry for that. I need to warn you, I'll have a short fuse. <laughs> okay, can we, can we, like, get to the episode just for a little bit? So, the Doctor and Earl encounter the native life forms. Oh, Terra my Alpha. God, the pipe people. Oh, uh, the <laughs> pipe people. Is, pipe people. So, like, I imagine... The uh, production design is like, okay, so you wanted these guys. Why did you say you wanted them like? Like the Ewoks in Return of the Jedi. Oh, <laughs> well, we've only got like two pounds. Eh, do what you can. <laughs> what, what, are these, what are these pipe people, or the Wences, as they're also known as? Uh, 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 the doctor over here is one going, wicked! <laughs> <laughs> and there was the her ace, because they've been spying for the manholes. On yeah, on so he, he overheard Ace and picked up her vernacular, which is quite funny. That's cute. I've no, got, what's really like, a funny, is... What's really funny is one of them is wearing fucking houndstooth print. It's just... Yeah. It's, it's killing me. It's killing oh me. God. Oh, my God. I love him. So, uh, what's Ace up to in the meantime here? <clears throat> and then, then we get a we get a great little scene. <laughs> we get a great little scene where... um. Helena has just ordered um, Susan Q's execution because she's been caught helping Ace, and so she's going to be executed, and Ace is going to be 
we take them back to audition for the Happiness Patrol. They really are keen to have Ace audition for this show. Auditioning for the show is basically just, oh, you didn't do so hot on audition. Guess I'm going to shoot you now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Gee, what would happen if they made an entire story around that concept? Hmm. Uh, mm. Interesting. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, the Doctor and Earl escape with the help of the Pike people. And then we oh. get this great scene. This great scene between oh, him and Trevor Sigma. <laughs> it's, it's so good. So Earl goes off on his own to, to hide out or, or whatever. And the Doctor encounters Trevor Sigma again. Now, Sigma is the designation for anyone who's off-world. They weren't born on Terra Alpha. So Trevor is an outsider. Earl's an outsider. The Doctor is an outsider. We get a... Oh, I forgot to mention, in the first part, we get another th- It's a Sigma mention. Hey! Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we do. But, um... It's just, this, this, really, this really funny bit between him and Trevor... Trevor is asking him questions. And then somehow the tables get turned like seamlessly. And then the doctor starts asking Trevor questions and he answers them. <laughs> and it's like, what do you say? And then and he turns it around, mirrors it, if you will. Yeah. It's just like Trevor Sigma says, What do you what do you mean? That's classified information. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It is great. That's and that he, means- that eventually gets the Doctor an in, as it were, with meeting Helen A. And Joseph C., yes. Who, who Helen A. has, meanwhile, sent Fifi down to the pipes to get the stragglers. But, you know, Ace, with a little Nitro 9, just kind of tries to blow the fuck out of it. <laughs> yeah, she blows the pipe up. Wild. Um, just wild. And then, yeah, as you say... You know, the Doctor meets Helen A and Joseph C for the first time. I love this scene just because of the casual way McCoy is about it. Like he, he's calm at first meeting them, and then Helen A goes bunker. The Doctor waltzes in. She's talking about population shit and uh, recur and routine disappearance. And it's also implied in the earlier scene that. Uh, Trevor Sigma suggested population control. And the doctor's in the Oh, did you use the Bureau's program? No, I uh, came up with my own uh, population control program. Rather effective. Which, you know, is just cold talk for, we needed to control the population, so I just killed everyone I don't like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much. You get the impression the Bureau's plans for population <laughs> control did not include mass murder. <laughs> yeah, but that's hell of a for you. Yeah, you know. Could- like zoning laws and maybe moving people off the planet yeah. or you know, exile sure things that like that not not murder but no let's just do cold-hearted murder sure that sounds uh, legit yeah he, he busts into her like chamber when she's discussing routine disappearances she gets mad with him he gets mad with her he taunts her a bit and then he waltzes out takes a fire extinguisher and a thing of lemonade with him yeah, I I enjoy the um I enjoy the bit where uh, where he meets her here far more than the second time they meet. I'll yeah, say the that. Time is, okay, yeah, I can I can see what you mean. It's it's very casual. A little there's a little hint of the darkness. I'm gonna take you to fuck down, you know. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's much more again subtle. Subtle, I I, I get where you're coming. From. It's the one time the story does subtle. <laughs> And does it rather well. Yeah. Anyway, we got another. We get another really like Jesus Christ. Sylvester McCoy was a really good doc. Where uh, the protesters, the uh, workers of the factories, who are protesting their working conditions and being allowed to be sad and stuff. Helen A just has snipers set up to yeah. like, shoot them. And the doctor knows this, so he approaches and this. Fucking scene. So this Holy is taking the shit. real life event of the miners' strike and just taking it to massive extremes. It, well, yeah, yeah that's that's what this story is doing. Thatcher, for all her faults, never had snipers targeting striking marches. <laughs> no, she didn't. But well, if she did, this might have been how it went down. But anyway, the 
the doctor comes up and this this speech is just holy fuck like if you can look it up if if it's on youtube i don't know if we can find it like a youtube sometimes they upload clips like that if we if we find it i'll have raniac put the description but it's worth your while just yeah play alone he's just like, standing there and the guy's point he walks up to where their sniper point is and the guy points the gun and who are you what are you doing here and the doctor is basically just like go on then go on then motherfucker do it what are you afraid of i'm you're the one with the gun pull the trigger End yeah my life it's a great doctor essentially, moment essentially essentially the doctor because this guy is a sniper and they've been complaining about how the women get the good guns and they're just regulated to you know crap duties and things like that mm-hmm. essentially the doctor is saying Look me in the eyes rather than from a distance when you try to shoot me. And he calls and the guy's bluff because the guy's not going to do, do it. do it. It's holy. That's one reading you can take of it. Another is that the gun only works at long range. Yeah. Well, I, I like cats reading. Hold on. Hold no, I prefer cats reading. I'm just yeah. saying that's a reading you can take out of it. But uh, And he throws the gun away off the balcony. Yep. It's, this, this is one of the better scenes of the episode. Definitely. Even if you don't like it. So, like, this is iconic Sylvester McCoy right here. Unfortunately, after that great moment, we all have to bring it down again because Susan Q is found guilty and she's going to be executed. So, bring in the, uh, the, the fondant again. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is wild because, uh, is it Susan Q and Ace or just Susan Q? Susan Q, Ace is away at this point. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so they're going to... They get the levers ready. I think who is it? Gilbert Ann, I think, does it because the Candyman's still fucking stuck and he gets some freedom. Yep. Yep. Yes. So Gilbert <laughs> is just like, oh well, they want the next. I guess I'll have to do it for you. He taunts him again. He he sets the the, the mechanism in motion and then wanders off. So the doctor comes back and with <laughs> the Candyman is like, hey, I'll free you if you call off the execution. Candyman agrees, and the doctor spritzes the. Uh, what I don't know, it's seltzer water or something? something. It's water. Lemonade. Water, just water. It's water from I a fire reason. extinguisher, so he... Well, no, no, I I think it's more lemonade because he picks it up later to stick the candy man back down. No, he, no the, the lemonade is to stick him down later. Again, it's water to free him. He, he uses the exact same container. It's still that yellow container that he picked up. That's to, that's to stick him back to the floor, but this is a fire extinguisher or something like that. Anyway... He frees him with, I think it's water, and the Kenneth actually actually sticks to the deal. He, after being free, he does divert the flow of the of the fondant, which is good because just well, as he does that, okay. Ace falls into the into the uh, into the execution chamber. Well, all they get is a little flipple drip of fondant surprise. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild because Helen A is in her little bunker and she's she's livid. She's like, what the fuck? You're fucking kill these fuckers! Do it again! And uh, Trevor Sigma helpfully points out, you can't actually do that. Yeah, and then catches the look on her face and says, but an alternative method of execution can be arranged. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) it is the bureaucracy catching her a bit interesting, but yeah, they can do an alternate execution, but... yeah. Anyway, the candy, back to the candy man. He's like, "Well, I kept up my end of the deal. I let you let me out. I I stopped the execution. I'm gonna kill you now. I don't think so. Bye bye." Yeah, he sticks into the floor again with lemonade. Key more shouting for Gilbert. Gilbert. Gilbert, who somehow has missed this entire scene where the candy man diverted the flow. By the way. Oh, Gilbert just doesn't give a fuck. No, I'm. We're, we're all Gilbert in that moment. Uh. So the doctor heads out, meets up with Earl again. Yeah. And then we get our cliffhanger. So. Uh, oh no. Ace is going to be on the show. Oh, Happiness no. Patrol audition. It's oh, not um, much of a cliffhanger. Yeah, it's oh, not. Oh, but it becomes more of a cliffhanger when someone comes and paints an RIP on another poster. Oh no. That's oh, somebody no. we've never oh, seen before. Oh no. Rip to. Sheila P. Sheila S. I, I didn't even know her name. Oh no. But that's but that's why this just doesn't work as a clip hanger. We're supposed to worry about someone we've never met. Mm-hmm. It's artificial well, 
It's artificial That's stakes. Perfect. There's there's no she's in no danger at this point, Ace. Yeah, I, I, the idea of the cliffhanger is oh no, in five minutes the show will start and Ace is next. Oh no. Yeah, but, the, like, then oh. cut to that. Cut from the RIP to Ace warming up and looking nervous. Yeah, you could do that. That's true. Anyway, episode three. Well, and... actually, before you say that, I just want to say her picture on the poster is hilarious. You actually see them take her picture for the poster earlier after the uh, botched execution. So it's interesting when they roll like that. It is so, very uh, hilarious, though. Episode three, then? Yeah, episode this three begins with um, with Helena just casually ordering all the, all the, um, the strikers to be disappeared. Which, now, this is definitely where the political reading of, like, killing your own political opponents or people you, like, disagree with in a really, like, totalitarian fascist method comes in. Because, I mean, it's obvious they're disguising it with the metaphor of people who are sad rather than someone who believes in something or someone who is a certain race or and really edgy like that that they wouldn't get away with on on Tuesday evening TV. But, you yeah. know, Doctor Who a metaphor. But, I mean, she literally calls them vermin at one point. Yeah. So it's like, I was just really about like, Jesus Christ. They're going for it. <clears throat> yeah. And also we get the uh, horrific factoid when the Doctor meets up with Trevor Sigma and reads his, like, completed census and all the missing people that she killed 500,000 people in six months. Yeah. And uh, fuck, as they say. All, all, yeah. all I can think of when he infers this listening it's so much longer than it appears to be is hold number one, arm drag. Hold number two, arm bar. Hold number three, the moss covered free handle family gridunza. <laughs> what? Jericho's list of a thousand and four holds. Oh my god, okay, wrestling jokes, okay. Yeah, okay. somebody will have got that and found it quite amusing. <laughs> and by somebody, I don't mean me. Uh, but, uh... uh <clears throat> okay, there's there's a scene later with the Doctor in this episode that I, I, I actually kind of... Where he's on, like, stage... I don't know if it's a stage, I don't know what you call it. I think it's the forum they call it. It actually be a stage. He's on the but steps got, of the like, forum. The and he's yeah. singing as time goes by from Casablanca. <laughs> I, I, I just think that's really cute. That and, and it's a really subtle, I'm a subtle way of uh, what, what, what's rebellion <clears throat> that he's singing the famous song from a really famous tragic movie like Casablanca. Yeah. Which is a sad movie. It's a tragedy, obviously. So to add that melancholy song, I, I feel little act of rebellion for him. Who said so? What are you gonna do? I kind of wonder if, like, um, that was just him um, improvising, and then they decided they liked it and decided to put it, it in. It could be, but I mean, I like I like the reading of it. I'm, I like it. I'm ripped, but I like it. A at least this I weird like way. Chosen the song. Right? At least to a very weird way that the doctor gets Ace and Susan out of the predicament that they're about to be. Oh, I love. Sent I love to audition. this. Yeah. I love this. So earlier he had Earl Sigma uh, run off and like gather up the protesters, the worker protesters, and get them all to come to the forum. So the Happiness Patrol roll up with Ace and Susan ready to take him to their audition. And here's the doctor, and he's laughing his ass off. He's having a great time. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. <clears throat> but it's clever because as he points out himself... As long as he's doing this, they cannot bring themselves to shoot him because it goes against everything they stand for. Clap your hands if you feel like a room. Because I'm happy. Yeah. I'm glad he is because I'm not. So they, but, uh, yeah. So they can't kill him because he's happy. Yeah. No, I'm never going to get that song out of my head. He, he uses well, right. their own twisted logic against them. Cat, I... I, I Cat, I could get that song out of your head, but I'd make it. Yeah. No, that's okay. It's already been replaced by Baby Shark. And this, I was gonna do Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> this, um. Well, you know, this sounds 
sounds a whole lot like, um, oh, um, whatchamacallit, um, <laughs> oh, a mirroring thing. Doctor, your mirror alert. <laughs> <laughs> this story doesn't deserve Doctor, your mirror alert. There, I've said it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. <laughs> no. Uh, Yes. Yes. Anyway. So the worker drones show up and they're having a party too. They're, they're singing. They're having a great time. Earl Sigma shows up with his harmonica. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. It's a goddamn party. And, and while this chaos is going on, uh, they escape. The four of them. Yeah. The four of them all escape in the security vehicle. Yay. So Susan, the doctor, it's Earl, great, like, and Ace. With their fuck up rules. Yeah. And even Basically. cleverer than, than uh, in all that, his little uh, scene also starts to cause the Happiness Patrol to fall apart due to infighting. Yay! Priscilla has now turned on, on Daisy K, who's the leader of the, of the group. Mm-hmm. Maybe Priscilla this, this, this could have maybe been, been done even, you know, it's flawed even more. Maybe they started attacking each other, maybe they started shooting each other. But we don't get that. Um, nah, they're just really petty. We just have Priscilla holding Daisy at gunpoint uh, while Daisy is forced to play the cash game that ex- ex- electrocuted Harold V earlier. Well, That's you know, wild. they have certain <clears throat> procedures that they have to follow, so I'm sure that they're all about order and not having anything chaotic going on. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's exactly why they couldn't shoot the doctor and all the protesters earlier, because they were happy. And that's why I, I do like that scene. It does work. It's, it's as I say, it's it's taking their own twisted logic and using it against them. And that's a very doctor move. Yeah, that's very McCoy. I as as Clara says it's in like Flatline, a... rule one of being the doctor and use your enemy's wep- weapons against them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's power, it's like but that it... part from Inferno where uh, the evil brigadier, what was he again? A commander? Brigade. The brigade leader. Brigade leader. Where, yeah, where the brigade leader was like, oh, we can't shoot him. He, there's bureaucracy to do. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. the same thing that they do here. But I prefer yeah, that yeah. that to, to, I prefer this to that because, yeah, I just well, prefer this to that. But, um. <laughs> I, I, I remember on Twitter, I, I think it was either on Twitter or in our DM, where you gave shade at me where I was like, oh, Wedding of River Song, the good version of him. And you were like, Jesus. Yeah. I'll stick by that. I'll stick by that. I will. Uh, I will back yeah. you up on that. <laughs> right. But, uh, so we, we end up in the pipes again, running around with the uh, pipe people. Yay. And Fifi's down there to get him again. And, and For some hey, reason she thought that was a good idea. Well, it almost worked the first time. Why not try it again? Yeah. It's and the answer is that Earl Sigma plays his harmonica and resonates the pipes and Fifi howls along with it and <laughs> crash boom pipeline sugar falls right on the alien dog yeah and it's, o- it's over the harmonica or the howling I think the harmonica hit the pitch and then Fifi's howling resonated with it yeah is I think how it goes uh, so yeah, Fifi dies in the pipe. Movie. That certainly wasn't a Turkish delight. And uh... well, <laughs> you've got one out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh... <laughs> I, so is, is it Fifi's howl? Well, you can't beat him during him. Um, is is Fifi's howl against the cause of the avalanche, not the harmonica? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. That's the, that's yeah. what you're supposed to read into it. Um... Then we get a scene where um, basically wanton vandalism, yay. Uh, Susie, Susan Q, who I swear at one point the Doctor calls her Susie Q, which makes me think it's a play on Susie yeah. Quattro. Yeah, he do- yeah, they do. They do. They absolutely do. Um, yeah. He also says, um, in, in his, his dialogue is very rushed here, but I think he says, I haven't met a sticker act since I was a girl in the 25th century. What? I... I- I had the I had the subtitles on the DVD. He said Birmingham in the 25th. Century. It sounded like if, since I was a girl. Yeah. <laughs> He's very muffled and, and rushing it. That's probably why. But uh, well, but, I mean, know about the the 
Cartmel master plan and the other and all that shit. Birmingham, be Birmingham really makes sense because if, if you've ever watched the um, Bir- Birmingham makes perfect sense though because if you've ever watched the second se- Doctor serial, the Crotons, you should know lots of planets have a Birmingham. What? Yeah, the Crotons. The, the Crotons. The aliens in that in that uh, story all have uh, Brummie accents. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, I, I didn't expect you to reference that fucking protons. Well, okay. I, I referenced it. I referenced it when uh, it happened on the um, on the on the uh, Twitch marathon. Okay. And people found it really funny. Let's, let's, let's put it at if Chibnall has his way, maybe the Doctor was a little girl in Birmingham. I, at some point. I said that. I said that. Yeah, By this anyway. point, Priscilla uh, P's been dealt with. She's I can't been, hear either of you two. So. She's been bound and gashed. She's out of the picture for the time being. Good. Uh, and therefore, Helen A. calls for the candy man to get the doctor instead. Which, which is which is the point that the doctor and Ace show up the fuck. With yeah, the we, we get a wild confrontation between the doctor and Ace and the candy man. This is fun because they're just like they're both cornering him, and Ace sticks like a metal thing on his stove. A poker. And then takes it out when it gets hot. Yeah, poker, and then she takes it out after a minute, and it's a red hot poker. Go right through his candy skin, which again, making a fucking row out of the candy is a gigantic glaring weakness when you're working in a goddamn hot kitchen. Yeah, hot there's, there's also there's also a not so good bit where the candy man basically insinuates that he hits children. Oh yeah, yeah. that fucking line. Impolite guest gets to feel the back guess. of my candy hand. The back of my candy hand, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't hate it at this point. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I guess at this point, the Candyman's saying to Ace that she's going to take five. Jesus! <laughs> That's it's fucked up. He, it, he said it, not me. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of taking five, Ace opens the oven and just blasts it with hot fire, <laughs> causing him to flee into fucking- the pipes. How the hell is this guy not caramelized? Well, he's he's far enough away from the fire to not be reduced to goo. <laughs> but he's frightened, so he he slowly, very slowly, escapes into the pipes. Which bad move, because we've got a whole bunch of fucking levers to pull. Yeah, the the pipe people just come in. It's like pull the lever, crunk, wrong lever. <laughs> And they basically flood the candy man with his own goddamn candy, hoisted by his own fondant. Yeah, that's all oh, very good. And there's a really fucked up line where Gilbert M. And, and Joseph C. are looking over the candy man's gnarled metallic remains. And yeah. Gilbert then casually mentions he made the slight mistake of unleashing a plague on the planet that killed half the population. Gilbert M. fucking invented COVID? Yeah. The M stands for malaria. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, shit is going south, and all the factories are, like, having a massive goddamn revolution and falling to the revolutionaries. Yeah. Oh, there's something I forgot to mention about the candy it's man that's like, an interesting reading. When it, when they're talking about how he, um, you know, you, you maybe said, what about his brain? His brain was very much his own. Now... There is a backstory to the Candyman. Is there? And I have to pull this up. It's in, it's in outside media. And it's absolutely oh, it is absolutely wild. I have never heard this. So okay, I I'm, I'm just going to pull it up, so just bear with me two seconds. Okay. Um, so this is the only time he appears on television, as you know. Because, you know, the Bassett's yeah. threatening legal action and right, all that. Right, right. But he shows up in a few uh, comics and, and books... Uh, so, where does it say his, uh, his origins here? Oh, yeah. Originally a human on Vasilip. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, originally what? a human scientist by the name of Sivad. That's Davies backwards. That's the joke. Um, the man who would become the candy member began a friendly rivalry with the chief scientist, a youth letter known as Gilbert M., and worked closely with him to push science to new boundaries. However, during this scientific pursuits, Gilbert actually created a deadly new germ that wiped out half the population. As a result of his mistake, the king of Vasilik ordered that Sevad and Gilbert should be executed on sight. Um, they flee to escape the bounty and hide in the caves, 
One day while foraging for food, a lone vigilante brutalizes Savad, leaving him for dead. Gilbert saves his mind and stores it in a suitcase and then implants his brain into a robotic shell known as the Candy Man. No wonder he fucking hates Gilbert. Oh yeah, I said it was wild. He got him killed. Do you and realize the... what this makes the Candy Man? Oh, oh God. Why? And the, the... It makes him into a Batman villain. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, and they do bring the Candy Man back for um, Big Finish, but it's okay because they can't use the, the Bertie Bassett character. They get around it in a very interesting way. Um, they just basically redesign him so he has a human body. It's it's audio! Um, oh, well, I mean, you got to redesign for the cover. But that's that's what they yeah. do. They, 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 they basically use like a stitched together corpse human body. They took away the one good part about the Candyman. Well, they had to because they didn't want to get sick. Yeah. You, you Give him a fucking licorice body or something. He's eventually destroyed for good by being pushed into a vat of additives. So, yeah, that's the Candyman. It's, it's wild. So all the factories are falling. The revolution is sweeping across Terra Alpha. And Helen A is packing her bags to get the hell out of Dodge. But who should be on her escape shuttle but Gilbert M? How'd he get there? Joseph C. let him on. They're out of here. Bye! <laughs> Fuck. This is about the smartest so, thing. This is the smartest thing that any character does in this entire serial, is get the hell out of Dodge. Basically, yeah. 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 And leaving Helen A. in the lurch, so she has to wait for the next base flight, which is when the doctor confronts her. Now, now I think you have uh, some issues with the scene. Oh, God, this is the worst thing of the entire yeah. story. So, yeah, this is the second confrontation, I and I wish it wasn't that. Well, you're allowed to disagree, but this is the worst thing of the entire thing for me. So, they have this confrontation where he sort of says, you know, are you happy? Are you are you always happy, Helen? And she says, of course. And then here's the, here's the critique of Thatcherism, which is employed with all this subtlety of a sledgehammer to the head. See, I get having political overtones in a story. That's fine. I'm absolutely fine with that. This scene to me is uh, evocative of why the Happiness Patrol doesn't work. Because it's one thing for the story to have political overtones. In this case, the story is all political overtones. Yeah. The characters are paper thin. They're quite enjoyable, some of them, but they are paper thin. Because everything is focused on, isn't Thatcherism bad, folks? Am I right? Yeah, honestly, I can see that. Hell, Helen A's actress only took the job because she hated Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> I mean, and not to tip my head too much, uh, you could point to, like, a crowd of people in Britain in 1988 and half of them probably hated Thatcher. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. As I say, people, some people love and some people actually despised her. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, <laughs> the doctor basically accuses Helen of, of, of having no emotion, and, and then she's like, I did what I did for the good of the majority, and at this point we're just being beaten over the head repeatedly with a plank of wood that says, Thatcherism is bad. And, oh. I, actually, I'm kind of thinking of the Gundam shooting over the head meme. You know this one. Yes. I think. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking of that, but <clears throat> what I took from the episode is, and this is from someone who isn't British and doesn't really know many of Margaret Thatcher's specific policies other than a generic Iron Lady bad, but I took this scene as sort of a takedown of conservative ideology in general, in a sense. That's fair. Like, I can see the, I can see the metaphor for it's going for, it's equating happiness and sadness, and taking the sadness that Helen A despises. Why can't everyone just be happy? And equating that as her political opponent. Equating that with uh, Thatcher's 
Iron Lady moniker, you know, and a general sense of conservative conservatism being like stiff upper lip, you know, facts don't care about your feelings. We have to be strong and power through the weakness. Because that's what se- that's what I feel like. Conservatism and weakness is, I think, the point they're going for here. There are different branches of conservatism, conservatism, right. but um, yes. Yeah, you you can see where I'm coming from. So oh, yeah, yes. I don't know if Thatcher's brand was specifically this, but given that she got the moniker Iron Lady, I would think that they're trying to play off of her being, you know... More, less emotional. It's not quite facts don't care about not your feelings. Quite. Yeah. Well, that's just the modern equivalence I came up with in my head. But, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not quite that. She, yeah, not essentially quite that. she got that nickname because she did not compromise her politics. And she, didn't con- she did not compromise with her leadership either, wh- right, either as right, well. Right. Yeah. Fair, fair. I think they're taking that and making it iron will emotion for the story. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. that's what that's what I, that's how I feel when when I'm get watching Honest, this. Honestly, scene. though, I will say this: um, I was not around when Margaret Thatcher was doing her thing. Uh, I was born in '89, so purely my knowledge of how she acts is entirely dependent on The Crown itself, which <laughs> is a a, uh, a Netflix uh, TV series. If you guys don't know, um, is that good? It is good. But it's very good. But it also does have fictional aspects to it. Right. So I can't. So I'm going to put a disclaimer here and say this is what happens in the show. If it actually does happen or has happened to people, then obviously you know they manage to get history right on that part. But take it with a grain of salt. Um, and that's how we're going to put this here. But basically. Yeah. The way they portrayed Margaret Thatcher is that she is a very unrelenting person. Um, She believes in her personal ethics. She believes in her personal politics. And anybody who does not believe in the same things that she does gets summarily kicked out. So, So when she gets elected in the show, one of the first things she does is she wants to um, cut spending. And a lot of people in her cabinet were like, we're the conservative party. We don't do that. We just sit here and and let things happen. And Thatcher that's not too far from show, the reality. Yeah, Thatcher in the show is very much a we can't do nothing kind of person, <laughs> and she always wants to do something. So she ejects people from the cabinet and puts them in with people who are more in line with what she believes. Um, she also has a thing where she's not a big fan of women, oddly enough. Hmm. A- according to her in the show, um, her father was a very strong person and her mother was a very weak person. And she learned from her father to be more than what she was just because she's a woman. Um, but she also says later on that she believes that people do have the capacity to be stronger people, no matter their gender. It's just that they choose not to. And I think that's where a lot of the hatred for her comes from, is that she's very much a... If you help out with everybody, then you're worth something. If you help with society, you're worth right, something well, kind of person. And that's what leads to a lot of the um, discontent uh, with her. Huh. I can see where you're coming from. I can see how the uh, strong, weak thing that you're talking about in The Crown can definitely be applied to Helen A. Yeah. If you consider happiness as strength and showing your emotion, showing sadness as weakness. And not even weakness. just that. It's the fact that women were the prime happiness patrol in the, in the episodes. Right. Yeah. Men were regulated to the background. Right, yeah. yeah. That too, definitely. They're definitely riffing on that in some way yeah. with this episode. And but, I can yeah. also say that Helen A., Acts a lot like Margaret Thatcher from The Crown. They have sort of the same quirks to them, where they have almost a, a, a deeper voice. Um, Helen A. tilts her head to the side, which apparently Margaret Thatcher does a lot. Um, right. Oh, Helen A. spots on Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a pretty, if again, you know, fictional aspects of The Crown, but 
if these are these are two very very similar uh, portrayals of Thatcher, so either it's a very good parody of her uh, that, that is very common, or it's actually how she behaved. I would say, considering, I I, I wouldn't be surprised if the actress Helen A, since you said that she took the job because she that she looked at a couple of speeches and like imitated her body language. Yeah. In her, that's that's probably what happened. But, yeah. But yeah. The, the fact remains that The Crown is more of a serious show because it, yeah. it does deal with things like death and uh, eating disorders and, mm-hmm. you know, people marrying for things other than love, things like that. So because of the way that it's portrayed, I think this is really how she actually acted. And the Doctor's uh, rebuttal in the scene is that happiness doesn't mean anything if it can't be paired with sadness. Yeah, and Congress. this part of the conversation I quite like. Yeah. And it's a shame that it's like sort of that. drowned out by all the uh, the anti Thatcher stuff. Hmm. Well, I, yeah. I still I still enjoy it. I I don't take it quite as anti Thatcher. Where the anti Thatcher came from, now that Cat gave me a little bit of a uh, context via the Crown, but yeah, I I can still see it as a general takedown of conservative ideology in general, even if <laughs> parts of it are obviously anti Thatcherite. But anyway, the the moment of aha uh-huh, irony is when Helena discovers the body of Fifi and weeps openly over her. Yeah, head. somehow Fifi got from outside the pipe being crushed to death to sorry inside the pipe to out here in the street. For yeah. dramatic effect, for irony, Helena, yeah. the one who wanted to crush all sadness and kill anyone who wasn't happy. Is now sad herself. Yeah, and that ends. I was kind of wondering, um, and this is just knowing what I do again. If this isn't sort of a, a sort of allusion to her son vanishing. Oh. Yeah. It could I be. Even know that, I didn't even know that happened. But what yeah. was wild is I'm thinking of I'm thinking ahead to the future of two years later where she was ousted and she left Downing Street in tears. Yep. Well, not even that. It's the fact that um, her son went to go join a rally race as one of the um, navigators. And his vehicle got lost for quite some time in the middle of the desert. So she got super emotional about this. Yeah. Do you mean Mark? Mark Thatcher. Yes. Yeah. Because he survived. To the point where um, I don't... Uh, I, I kind of don't want to mention this just because Rain is here, and I don't know how England uh, takes this, but um, have you ever heard of the Falkland Islands? Yeah. Oh, boy. Arguably, that was the thing that she did that she was most... Yeah. I don't want to um, say popular for, but she again, defended our interests. Grain of salt, grain of salt, but apparently the, the instant exciting factor of the Falkland Islands happened while her son was missing. Oh. Yeah. So she got very, very emotional about the fact that um, the way the show presented it was as a, a sort of a side to, not a side, a um, I guess a simile maybe to her son being missing where the uh, essentially the defense secretary said that they should do nothing. They should let democracy, you know, talk to the people of Argentina and everything. And in the show, she says basically like, we cannot do nothing. Those yeah. are British people on British soil. We must do something. I'm not going to offer an opinion myself because it would not be appropriate. But I will just say that to most neutrally minded people, the Argentinians were the aggressors of the conflict, the instigators. You know, you know what that's called, Cat, in that show. That's mirroring. <laughs> like it's mirroring. Like I'm not even trying to be. That's according to well, your description. Well, yes, but I'm just wondering if the death of Fifi is supposed to be how she suddenly broke down after her son went missing. That would be an interesting it's... parallel. That is a reading I, I haven't seen before, but I like it. I like it too. Well I, thought I, out, and it would make sense if they're. Anyway, so with, with Helen A's regime effectively over because of this uh, bout of emotion, all that's left is to wrap things up. So the Happiness Patrol have been captured and they're unpinkifying everything. And quite right, too. It's the least they could do. Those things are... Those were wigs all along. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because Daisy and Kay is tied so, to a chair at one point and her wig comes off. 
and they paint the TARDIS blue again, and the Doctor and Ace swan off. Yeah, Susan and Neil okay. left behind to work to try and rebuild Terra Alpha. There's a great bit earlier where um, Susan is just, is just blasting the hell out of all of the loudspeakers. Beautiful. To get rid of the lift music. And then, of course, she goes into the office, subdues Daisy K, and pulls out the, the master tape. So no more lift music. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's the uh, end of the Happiness Patrol. So, uh, thoughts? I think we're going to differ wildly. We are, and I'm going last. <laughs> All right, all right. Cat, you go first. We'll make a sandwich. Up. <laughs> all right. Um. So yeah, this is a weird, weird serial. Um, it's hard to say I like it or I dislike it just because the the cuts are weird. It it goes into weird things all the time. It's very Gonzo. You have the Candy Man, but also I can't say that I hate it just because you have the Candy Man and it's just. Again, so weird. It's it's sort of that middle road of I would definitely watch it again because it's so weird, but also the Thatcher elements do kind of you know drag it a bit. Um, Helen is fine as a um, as an antagonist. She's you know she's just Thatcher. It's kind of hard to ignore that. Uh, and the Candy Man, the Candy Man has only one thing going for him, and that's being made of candy. Uh, if it wasn't for that, he would be extremely boring because he literally just pulls some levers, gets captured, gets released, gets captured, runs away. And that's pretty much all he does. So, on the whole, it's it's one of those uh, serials that I might watch again just for the Gonzo aspect, but not anytime soon. That's valid. For me, I, uh, I, my opinion in time Time. When I first saw it in 10, didn't really care for it. It was a little too weird for my taste. As I went on, as I watched more classic Doctor Who, got acquainted with it, and as she said, drifted more leftward. Uh, I really love this story now, honest to God. It is, as I said at the top, a gonzo pink candy shell with anarcho-leftist critique of conservatism as a caramel center. I... And I'm, I'm down for that. For God's sakes, I stand Orphan 55, and this is subtler than Orphan 55. It's not, it's not literally screaming to the audience's face that Thatcher was bad. It's just very strongly hinted that Thatcher was bad. But I do like it. It's a generic sort of weird dystopian planet, but everyone's really cruel about it. And it's the kind of place you want seven ish ace tear down and they do the candy man and gilbert m are delightful deadpan slash marzipan villains we've got some interesting side characters like earth sigma and cq and of course there's helen a has that lovely air of taking the piss out of thatcher and there's a lot of fun to play at here there's lots of stuff with turning the society against as they tear it down. There's that incredible gun scene. Definitely I don't know if it's a top McCoy for me, but it's a great McCoy for me, and I'd heartily recommend it. So Brainiac, that leaves you. Yeah, so when I picked this last week, I stated that this was your chance to change my mind. And in a way, my mind oh, has been that. changed. When I saw this a few years ago, I thought it was one of the worst Doctor Whos I'd ever seen. Hmm. I no longer think that. I no longer think this is a terrible Doctor Who story. I still don't enjoy it personally. But I can, I think objectively, it's not a terrible Doctor Who story. It's, it's weakness is that it is too... I don't want to say it's too political, but it's the way that they handle the politics. Too on the nose. Usually. Yeah, it's it's got to be a it's got to be a balancing act. If you put too if you have a political story that's got too little political subtext, it's too weak. If you have a political story that's got too much of it, it just drowns everything else out. Yeah. And this is the the latter. It drowns everything else out. And there are things to like. I actually think the Candyman is rather a good antagonist. I wish he did more, 
then just got stuck to the floor, uh, moved a few levers about, got stuck to the floor again, <laughs> got attacked by another and melted in a pipe. I wish he did more. That's literally what I just said. <laughs> but, yeah, but him and I'm agreeing now with you. Now you're marrying me. Fuck. But I'm agree. I'm agreeing <laughs> with you. But he and Gilbert M make a great uh, comedy double act, particularly his shrill screaming of Gilbert's name is, is just fantastic. <laughs> Earl and like Susan are, are all right as side characters. Sheila Hancock's a great actress, but Helen A is just is just Margaret Thatcher. I can't even see her as a Doctor Who villain. She's just Ma- she's just Margaret Thatcher, which is of course the point. Hmm. And the other thing that, that's really good, weak good about this is there is so much repetition in this story. Several times the Kenny Man gets stuck to the floor and then freed and stuck to the floor again. Several times Phoebe gets let loose into the pipes. Yeah. For a story that's so gonzo, it just doesn't have an imagination. Well, to be fair, the writer has uh, two foods as his name, so obviously it wasn't going to be that imaginative. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you two foods, write a good story. Uh, he's... he's- He's also he also I I don't know if it was last year or this year but we lost him. Oh, well I'm sorry so I'm sorry two foods right? rest in power, but um <laughs> yeah that's that's what I think about it. it 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 has partially changed my oh. mind oh. and it's no longer in the terrible category. Well either way I'm glad you picked it and let me talk about it. but well. We're all divided on it in our own ways, but if you want to see what it's like, well, check it out for yourself. Yeah, please do. And see, see what you I would encourage people to listen to these to actually experience it for yourself, because listening to three people Absolutely. talk about it is one thing, but you don't really get a feel for something until you see it yourself. Yeah. Exactly. So, and I wouldn't have picked this if I'd known it was the twenty. It was the anniversary of the show. I'd have picked something a bit more fitting. But I'm glad that we did. I'm glad the monkey is finally off my back. Now the question <laughs> is: Is Kevin put another monkey next, right back next. on there? Because it's her turn next. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, okay. What have you done? And I'll just strap myself monkey. into the chair and go ahead. Can you pay Peter Davidson to call me a hater? Damn it, you figured it out. Shit. Okay. What do you got? I've got nothing. 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 I'm gonna be straight this time and just pick something straight up. No okay. tricks, no weirdness, nothing you know, no gimmicks, nothing like that. Right. And that's the gimmick this time is I'm doing nothing. but but also I want to do something maybe not unusual but something that we haven't really done before I want to go back to the beginning Uh the beginning beginning Uh, okay I see where you're going of Doctor Who itself yeah I like where this is going so okay. I think it's time to take a look at an unearthly child. Yes, good choice. And we're announcing it on the 57th anniversary of that airing. We should have reversed these two episodes, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. yeah anyway, so the, the very first serial have... ever, an unearthly child. I like this choice. Yeah. Which is one interesting episode, and then three... Uh, the hell am I looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen it, Cap? Or is this a blind pick? This is a blind pick. Oh! Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> the only thing I looked up about this episode was making sure it was actually there. Yeah, no, all four parts are there because they showed it on uh, on BBC television a few years ago. It's like, the only thing I cared about was, does this still exist? In the run-up yeah. to the 50th anniversary, they did a whole bunch of stuff. They did um, Advent- an Adventure in Space and Time, of course, with uh, David Bradley as, as uh, William Hartnell. They did Night of the Doctor, and they showed an Unearthly Child in its entirety in the space of one night. Yes. I have not seen this. It is, however, the first ever Doctor Who episode. Indeed. 
where it all began. And I'm quite excited. Oh, this will be fun. Okay. It will. It's okay. The next time it's my turn, you're all a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anything to plug, Raniac? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, see the hottest new uh, Twitch superstar, it's uh, twitch.tv forward slash concave usurper. Yeah, sure. If you want to drop the I show a line... I streamed in several weeks, and I'm sorry for that. That's fine. You'll pick it up again. It's fine. Yeah. Um, And that, that Halloween stream we did about us playing a bunch of Jetbox games was an absolute blast, so don't apologize for anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, if you want to reach the show, you can find us on Twitter at Reviews Doctor. If you want to talk to us individually, it's at Freezing Inferno, at Concave Usurper, and at Raniac Damaniac. It's still DA. I still can't get that damn egg to relinquish its title. You better run egg. <laughs> you better run egg. It's right, damn yes. You egg. It's going to kill me by cholesterol. You Just you watch. Um... If you want to drop us an email, it's goatsdermityourself at gmail.com. I swear that's our real email address. It's not a bit. That really is our email address. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> Thank you. And you can decide, you can um, maybe suggest an, an episode for us to review or, or a subject matter or, or something. Or something. And until then, until next week, then, all that remains to say is to thank uh, Jerry and Kat for uh, talking about the Happiness Patrol and finally getting this monkey off of my damn back. Thank you to you, the audience, for listening to, to us get the monkey off my back and join us next week for the very first Doctor Who adventure, An Unearthly Child. Until then, bye for now. Bye. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> I'll say for one thing, guys. Watching that story certainly wasn't a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are nutrageous. <laughs> what? Yep. Clap your hands if you feel like a room at a room because I'm ha I'm so glad that cut out just then. Oh, I, 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 shall I do it again? I don't think it liked you clapping that much. Okay. Clap your hands if... Fuck. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> for real. It's me. I, I messed that up. Yeah, it was on me. Clap your hands <laughs> if you believe in Tinkerbell. <clears throat> <clears throat> Clap your hands if you want this yeah, to be I over. I remember the lyrics to my Pharaoh Williams call. Okay. Three, two, one. Getting all of the political baggage out of the way so I don't mess it up when we go live. You picked the happiness patrol. <laughs> <laughs> this is not I'm sorry, but can't... political baggage. I'm talking no, about sorry, real sorry, life sorry, current sorry. politics. No, sorry, I just saw something. Cat, cat, cat. read it. Oh, read oh it. <laughs> okay, that was worth it. That's like the mood again. Can we, can we, can we put that in the update? <laughs> Yet. I mean, it's not like I'm in charge of it or anything. Yes, yes, we can absolutely do that. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, uh, let's, let's, let's.